2620. And then I'm I'm not gonna be before you long. I also have something something to say. But um, I want to talk, um, just show you in the scripture what it says to us about really covering yourself. And so you, you really want to do that because uh, we have to understand we, in this biblical history, um, we are actually in warfare right now. And, but it's, it's, it's not as hard as it's going to be. Not to bring any fear because we're well equipped because number one, we are his battle axe. And he said, not only are we his battle axe, and this is Jeremiah 51, but he said we are his weapons of destruction. And and um it's probably what he got it when he's dealing with Saddam Hussein, they probably got it out the bottom. Weapons of destruction, we are his balance, and he's gonna use our mouth and the sword. And it's in 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 that he's gonna use our mouths to prophesy. And we need to pay attention when he's asking us to prophesy. It's not going to be little, you know, milky type prophecies. It's not going to be that. It's, it's going to be where um, even those that are coming out of here will be prophesying to nations and prophesying to regions um, so the atmosphere can shift, so the portals can begin to open. One of the things that happened is we have to look at Isaiah 26, 20. But the most high loves, what's that word up there? Justice. He loves what? Justice. He loves justice. And whenever he do anything, he always do it for a reason. And just like the IRS, they going to um, um, people who Say, well, I don't even know they was trying to do nothing, but they're gonna call, they're gonna send you 1900 um, letters before um, anything happens. And I want to say that because he loves justice. That means he is full of mercy. He's full of mercy, and and guess what? He shows mercy on whoever he wants to show mercy. On. And um, he loves justice. And so as we understand his hand, he gives chances after chances after chances. And then he said, OK, I'm done. And so verse 20 says, 26, 20, come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself self as it were for a little what? Moment. Moment. Until the what? Indignation is past. Now one of the things I found out in this warfare, in this warfare, people saying a plague, um, pestilence, sword. and famine, they are calling this enemy. They are saying the plague, the pestilence, the sword, and the famine is an enemy, but it's not. It's y'all, y'all himself. This is judgment. And it's judgment that starts with the house of y'all first. It always starts with us. And it's dealing with iniquity. And 
and righteousness. And not only is judgment deal, is going to start with the house of God first and go deal with um, iniquity. Anyone who did anything against the children of the Most High God is an enemy to, to him. It's an enemy. It's an enemy. This system is in, like in reverse. And the reason why it is totally against the Most High God. That's why we have to dispel lies. Everything is against him. Everything. And so we're born into this place. We're born into this sin, literally. And we thought it was just Adam, but we understand it's part of the system that is very evil. Um, so then we got to deal with generational curses. Well, what mama and whatever they did, and then we got to deal with our own stuff. So that's why it's important if we um, look in Jubilees um, chapter 2, 1, it says, and let's go there real quick, it says for us to return to him. So, we love mercy. And justice is, is, is going to happen, but it has to be repentance. He's not playing with nobody. Our hands have to be clean and our hearts pure. Pure at the end. So it's going to take for us to repent. Repentance means to turn away. Repent is not just a cute word that we've heard out of the church. Oh, I repent, but then the next day you're still doing the same thing. And then you got nerves enough, enough to pray. But let me tell you, you pray, here's your face right here. And when you pray, guess what? Guess what is going? Right here. It can't go nowhere else. And as we've been studying the word, we see so many air, um, places in scripture where he says he will not hear your prayer. So repentance means to turn, so we gotta turn. And what are we turning to? We're turning back. We're turning back to the Father. So repentance is gonna wipe our slate clean when we turn. It has to be a change of mind But guess what else? A change of action. Pastor and I have been talking about sanity and insanity. If you are still doing the same thing, you're still getting the same results. Um, I don't know what Einstein, one of them said, it's called insanity. Because you have to understand there has to be a change. And then we cannot um, complain on what we tolerate. And want something different, but we're not willing to make that shift. Say, I gotta make the shift. I gotta make the shift. Look what it says, and then we're gonna go to a couple of scriptures on justice. I would ask everybody to really read this chapter one and chapter two of Jubilees. You have it, Jubilees. She needs a book. Oh, she has a book? So it says here, anybody else need an apartment? No, no, Okay. One of the things that, that happened and why we used the apartment because in the last days, in Daniel 12 and in Enoch and in Ezra, the books were, the seal is off of the end times 
and he wrote all these books that he tried to destroy and that he took out in the 1800s, all of a sudden they're coming back. Not all of a sudden, they're coming back because it reveals in time. It reveals so much of who we are. It reveals so much of who Daddy is. And so in this hour, it's not a joke. It's, it's the real deal. But it's going to take us to have some knowledge. Go look at somebody and say, I got to have some knowledge. You got to have some knowledge, because if you don't have some knowledge, you can get ate up like this. And we don't want that. It says here in, um, let's go real quick. Let's go to verse 19. Let thy mercy, O Elohim, be lifted up on your people and creating them a what kind of spirit? A clean spirit, upright spirit, and let not the spirit of Belair, if I said it right, yeah. rule over them to accuse them before you and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness so that they may perish from thy, before thy face. Listen. It's going to be very, very imperative that we understand um, the commandments and the laws. Guess what? A lot of your judicial system, if I said it right, is, is working off of the laws of the Most High Yah. You can go through the laws and say, oh, wait a minute, this is where they got that from. Oh, this is where they got that from. So they use biblical principles to um, even create their own ju justice of judicial system. I think you really want to. And so um, we're on page 278. So these books are very, very important with the end times. So we got to read it. We got to study it. We got to research it. And the beautiful part where I learned is that Get this word, do a little bit at a time, and then go to the Hebrew scrolls, because all of these were one scroll at one time. In their system, the Babylonian system, they broke it up. The Council of Nicaea, um, the Roman Church, um, um, the Pope, you had Constantine, you had all of these people that went about to change up on purpose so we won't know. Man, it's cold blood. Because when you look at it, not only are we seeing us that are slain or whatever, but we're seeing, seeing how there was much work. And I don't know who it was, I think Apostle Mice, they spent millions upon millions upon millions to destroy, but couldn't destroy this work. Can you imagine that? Taking pictures down, cutting off noses, off of statues, just doing it so we wouldn't know that we even existed at the very beginning. Look what it says, verse 19, 20. But they are my people. Who is he talking about? Us? us. Yes. Yeah. And they are my what? Inheritance which thou hast delivered with great power from the hands of the Egyptians. Look what he said. Now we understand that is what happened with Pharaoh. He delivered from the hands of the Egyptians. But something happened later on, which whenever we see Egypt, we're also understanding that's a place of bondage. So when you see Egypt again, he's talking about a place of bondage. It said, create, creating their what? A what? So when we turn back to him, our hearts got to be what? Clean. For real clean. Because remember, in this dispensation, everything is inside out. Everything is inside out. Nothing is, is what you see anymore. So the heart has to be clean. And the hand that, um, well, the heart, the heart pure, right? Hands clean. 
And so, and then what? And creating them what? I think I dropped down too much. No, clean heart and Holy Spirit. And let them not be ensnared in their what? And from henceforth until when? How long is eternity? How long is eternity? Forever and ever. So there is something he put in us as his people and as his inheritance and he's delivering us with great power for eternity and he said don't let them be ensnared in their sins please he said don't let them be ensnared in their sin and so we have to get rid of the sin in our lives because <coughs> it's like a trap just like this you get into a bear trap and that that joker don't want to turn you loose and you know what a bad trap, what it does? The, the more they try to rip it out of it, the tighter that trap gets. So you want to get out of it, but guess what? You got your mind you got to deal with. Yeah. You, 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 you got other people that know the enemy uses people to keep you ensnared. Mm -hmm. And that's why he said, don't be unequally yoked, even in our friendship. He says, bad company corrupts. So there is a separation that's going to happen. Who is my mother? Who is my daughter? Who is my son? Who is my wife? Who is my husband? Who is? It's the one that does the will. I'm telling y'all, it's, it's a separation that's happening. We love everybody, but then there's a separation that's happening. And you got to let it happen. Say, oh, wait, I love He said, let me do this. Because, remember, in Ezekiel, and write this down so you can study it, Ezekiel 14, it's every man for himself. He said, even if Job, Daniel, or, or Noah was in a, it, when he sent the plague, he said, it plague, the sword, the pestilence, if these three mighty men were in there, they could only deliver themselves. They can't even deliver their sons and daughters. That right there. It's like, son, you better get right. Daughter, you better get right. Then, and I'm trying to be quick. And then it says in verse um, 21, And the, uh, Elohim said unto Moses, I know their contrariness and their thoughts and their stiff, stiff naked, neckedness. And they will not be obedient until they confess their own sin. You see what we got to confess our own sin? And what else we got to confess? So he said to the Father, Father, forgive me for my sins and all of the sins of my forefathers. Father, I am sorry. I am turning back to you. Y'all see that? In 22, and after this, they will turn to me in all what? Uprightness with all their heart and with all their soul. And I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of the heart of their seed. And I will create them a what? Holy Spirit. And I will cleanse them so that they shall not turn away from me from that day until what? Eternity. And their souls will cleave to me and to all my commandments. And they will fulfill my commandments. And I will be their father and they shall be my children. And they all shall be called what? Children of the living God. And so one of the things that happened is that we're returning back to who we are as a people. All of the tribes are called different things. They call them Puerto Ricans. They call them Haitians. You know, they're calling them different names. Um, they're Spanish. They're calling them different names. Uh, even Na Native American, and, and that's not even a proper name. Even e Indians. They're not calling them by their tribe because that was taken away. It was taken away on purpose. So you will know you part of a tribe. And so then when they start talking about tribes of people, everybody would say, well, I'm part Indian then. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It was our heritage that was being wiped away. And so Deuteronomy 28, 
um, starting with verse, I think, 15, is these are the curses that we would be known from by words. When we talk about the Puerto Ricans and the Brazilians, they still are part of a tribe. The 12 tribes are scattered all over the world. Most of Judah, most of Judah came here to this place called America. Most of them were kings and queens and leaders. And I love us. We're some smart people. And so when they came here, they, they were scientists and um, mathematicians and you know, they were architects, and that's why things got built like they did in agriculture. They knew how to grow stuff because they were smart. They were the best of the best because the United States was fertile ground. It had oil in it. The land was rich. And so they got the best of the best and captured them, kidnapped them to come here to, to work as slaves in, in a very inhumane way. So we repent and we turn back, and then it said, and they call children of the living God, verse 24, and every angel and every spirit shall know, yeah, they should know that these are my children, and that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness, and that I love them. Y'all see that? Turn to the book of the room. It's on page 560. Really, you need to read all of it. But when we return, we need to return to him 10 times more. Well, we have to be more wiser than before. Because when they let the children of Israel go before, what happened? Pharaoh came with the army. Even though the army drowned in the Red Sea, still came after that. After the Emancipation Proclamation, which today is Juneteenth, we have to understand, even if I, I really didn't celebrate Juneteenth, and the reason why I didn't celebrate Juneteenth at first, because I was really ticked off at Texas, how in the world you all did not do something after two and a half years. You still, you still in bondage. 1863 um, is when everything, 1862, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation to go in effect January 1, 1863. And it was two and a half years that they still were slaves because the Confederate states didn't want to turn them loose. So they were able to begin to execute and one of the Union soldiers, a major general, came to Galveston and announced the freedom of the slaves. Two and a half years later. I'm just glad that the Most High did it <laughs> And he knew I couldn't be born during that time. I've been that not Nat Turner or either um, um, Harry Tubb, real easy with my shot on. Y'all come in a wood. Y'all better come on. So it says here, and I'm just going to jump to the back. It says to on um, chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Let's go to twenty-eight. Let's go to 27. Let's go to 26. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. So be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yah, and you shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. Who brought it upon him? Look at page 568. Who brought it upon him? He did. So we cannot pray against what he is doing. We have to prophesy and study the prophets of this end time and prophesy what they say prophesy. 
He has to finish what he was going. He, he he said he was going to do. Look what it says. For you shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind, look, to go what? Astray, Astray from who? Yah. So being what? Return. So what are we doing? Are we turning back? Are we turning back? We're turning back with our whole heart, with a pure heart, hands clean, and I need to add Holy Spirit, the Holy Ruach, the Ruach HaKadosh. As being returned, we got to seek him. How many? Ten times. Let me hear it say it all together. Ten times more. He said we got to seek him ten times more. Why? Because there's a lot of evil stuff here. And he wants to tell us. He wants to share his heart. He wants to give us, you know, um, a head start. He wants to do all of that because it's evil. Even now, more lynchings are taking place. Literally. We see shootings taking place. Murder rates high. And now they're saying it's not necessarily black on black crime. They I think it's a lot of groups out there that's shooting like drive-bys. They say it's out of the norm. We are in warfare. It's a race war. And it's going to get worse. But the Most High said we are protected. We are protected. Just don't, you know, don't be going out there looting and stealing and don't do nothing that's going to cause them to take you down. Nothing. Male or female. Ten times, how many? Ten times more. Ten times more. So during this time of, of, um, of um, Juneteenth, we need to remember what the Most High has done. We need to realize what he has done and that he loves justice. And just a couple of scriptures. Go to Psalm 37. He loves justice and one of the... Um, definition is he loves just behavior or treatment. He loves just behavior or treatment. And so, are you there? Where are we? I said, um, Psalm 37. Look what he says here. And you know, so Psalm 37, I want you to remember this, that when there is famine in the land, the children of Israel are blessed. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yes. If there is lack of insufficiency, you need to come against it and say, oh, no, 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 I don't receive that because when there's a famine in the land, I am blessed. Remember, it's going to be our righteousness that's going to get us to the place where we're supposed to go. Look at, look at uh, Psalm 37, 6. What does it say? He shall bring forth as what? The light and your what? Justice as the noon day. And that is a scripture that you literally can, you can begin to decree and declare. He, Father, we thank you. We decree and declare your righteousness is as light and your justice is as noon day. 3728. Yes, yeah, yeah, there. And Elohim loves what? Justice. And he justice. justice. And he does not what? Forsake, Forsake what? His saints, his children. Okay, let's read the next one together. They are what? Preserved, Preserved how long? Forever. Forever. Uh oh, let's read that next one though. But the descendants 
of the wicked shall be what? Cut off. And the righteous shall be what? Inherit the land. And dwell in it forever. That's some good stuff that we can expect. Because he loves what? Justice. Look at um, Job. Go to Job 27. 23. You there? 27. What? 23. 37. 23. Sorry. They say we cannot find him, but he is what excellent in power and what else in judgment and what else and abundant justice. justice. Read the last one. He does not what oppress. He does not oppress. He don't oppress. Not our daddy. No, he's good to his children, but we gotta do what's right in his sight. We have to do it the way that he's called us to do. And just one more scripture. You go to Zechariah. And if anybody asks you, but what does the Father want me to do? Go to Zechariah. Um, Two scriptures, seven and nine, you there? This is what he wants us to do. Execute what? True justice. Show mercy and compassion to everyone, his brother. We gotta began to treat each other right. I want you all to do something and do this um, so we can have it together. If you can print it out and bring it. It's the Willie Lynch letter. The Willie Lynch letter, How to Make a Slave. Now that the 400 years is up, there are hidden generational spirits that are in our mindset. I believe that we shed light to this letter. It's going to free our minds. It's going to free us to the point. Everyone to his brother, do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor. Let none of you plan evil in his heart against who? His brother. We are known for people to self-hate. But it was a learned behavior. Willie Lynch said, to make a slave, take their mind, but don't harm their body. He said, indoctrinate them for a year to, to hate themselves and hate each other. And to trust us, the masters. He said, do that for a year. It will be generational. You don't have to regas gas them up. And it'll last for hundreds, he said, even thousands of years. I need to say, somebody say, it's breaking. It's breaking. By any means necessary. <laughs> say, it's breaking. It's breaking. You got to understand, this is not no play. We in warfare, <clears throat> but we gotta get our people right. Okay, that's that's how I'm going. As I was just um, 
listening and uh, going through everything. Um, the Most High is just saying unto me, really, we have to really know who we are. I don't think our forefathers really knew who they are because they kept saying it. But when you talk about angels, when you talk about the Most High, you're talking about us. Let me say that again. When you're talking about angels, or when you're talking about the Most High, Yah, when anytime there are angels in the Most High, we are always around. We are always around. When Moses went up to the mountain, Mount Sinai, after bringing the children into the wilderness, he went up there, he was up there for what? 40 days and 40 nights. And the Most High told him from the beginning of creation all the way through everything that was going to happen. This is why he was so mad because and this is why he did not allow nobody to come uh, through the wilderness because everybody died except for three people. Because they had, they, they, they begged too much, they, they, they talked too bad, you know, they didn't go through so he allowed everyone to the only ones he took was the ones at 20 years age, 20 years old, for battle. Everybody else died. What do I mean? What am I saying? When you see Jubilees, you see an account after we were brought out of Egypt into the wilderness, going up to the Mount Sinai, and Moses coming back down and then giving them what he had said. So when we look at this, it is great and significant. This is our history. So when you read it, it says, and I'm going to go because she already said a whole lot, but I, felt, I thought the major part was that when we sinned, we were given a 400-year sentence. Our, our lineage, our people were given a 400-year sentence. And he was not about to back away from taking his hand off of us. He did it when he was talking to Ezekiel. Remember, he laid on, Ezekiel laid on the side, on the east gate and the west gate for all that time to show the people how crazy it was because the people had went, went crazy. I mean, all the things that were happening, how they began to take the sanctuary, bringing Baal off of them, doing all of these kinds of things, tainting and bringing everything against the will of the Most High. He foresee it. So when we get here to Jubilees, this is after the bringing the people out of disparity, and even then in the wilderness, they still was acting crazy. He went up to the mountain and stayed up there. The most high began to start talking to him about everything. The people downstairs started going crazy and started making calves of their own self and lasciviousness and doing all of these things down at the bottom of the mountain. Again. Most, the Most High told Moses to get on down there because the people are starting to do it again. So we want to say, how can we get this sin out of there? Because apparently the Most High don't care nothing about the sin that you created. Why? Because he made us different. The angels are around us all the time. We must understand who we are and we keep on acting like we're the Gentiles. And he doesn't like us being like the Gentiles because Esau don't have a law to keep, but we do. So therefore, we have to be have justice. Why? Because it's sold on the inside of us. And we come back looking for the fruit, and the fruit ain't there. What do you think you're going to do? Let's just go through here. I just want to go through a little bit what she has here. And so it says, it says here that the reason why we, we messed up is because we failed to recognize his feast days, his ordinances, his jubilees, his Sabbaths, all of that, what he said, and what, what we're doing here. 
Do, have y'all heard about Jubilee Sabbath feast day? No. But, and so we have two different systems going on here. One system is going this way. Another system is going that way. This system over here affords itself to come from our mothers and fathers them what they've been operating out of all of these years. Now you got this other system that the Most High said and then this system is not like this system. And so if we stay on this system, we forsake this system. So now we're understanding what can we do. So we have to return back to what he has already started in order for us to stay righteous with the Most High. We have to forsake this system because this system right here have afforded our forefathers to always go astray. The Babylon system has been here all the way since then. If they wanted to learn how a system would go, all the cities that we operated in all the way back then had to pick up or take on the Babylon system. And the Babylon system is not the same direction of the Most High Yah, so that's conflict already, all together. So now since we got conflict, still we have a system to abide in, but you know, but you got this other system. Everybody wants to go and go with this system. And every year, you already know because you, you know been barbecuing what for 35 years now, 20 years, 15 years. You know what you already got it together, you have to tend everything together, you already know exactly what you want to do. But he said, oh, wait a minute. Here's the key. He said you have to come off of that. Because I have a system, because our forefathers, how they operated during that system, before Constantine came, messed it up, they were being blessed. They were being, they were being blessed all the time. They were being blessed so much that Constantine went to uh, the, uh, the people and started getting uh, the power. And that first time I see the Catholic Church get the power to take us off the Sabbath and going on a Sunday for worship. And, um, I just want to add with that that they didn't have the power to do it. No, they and didn't. That's what he's saying. They didn't have the power to do it and some were even killed because a whole lot. they did not agree with the change that the Catholic Church was executing, especially the Sunday. And so now it has afforded us. And it took out another commandment. And we we gonna get into that one. So the most high the most high right for Moses, he said, okay, Moses, I'm gonna have these angels write this for you so you can understand, so you can give them to my remote generation. I wonder who the remote generation is. Thank you. We're the remote generation. Now you know who you are. We he said, and it was the question they said 10 times. The number I'm hearing 10 times, what? Got to, got to go 10 times harder? Well, then how about 10 times greater we already are? We already, ten, it's already been proven. Because when Nebuchadnezzar, he, when, he, when he went and he uh, raided uh, Jerusalem, he took four Hebrew boys out of there. And the four Hebrew boys, he took them, it was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when he took them out and he took them into his kingdom, he would try, he tried them for 15 now, for 21 days, and after the 21 days, he tried all of them against his kingdom. And then they came back. When they came back, they, this is what they said. We found that Hebrew boys were 10 times greater than anybody in my kingdom. 10 times greater. I found it very Intriguing when we said ten times. Ten times. So now it is in us to be able to do what the most I want us to do. Our problem is we straddle the fence. We go over here and do this one. And we go over here and do that one. And we think it's okay because nobody sees us what we're doing. And then we go back over here. We do this one. And then we go back over here and do this one. And he said, wait a minute. You got to make a, new, you know, a decision because your children is coming behind you. Going to do it greater than you. And rather you got it in secret. They going to put it all the way out in the open. So what you going to do? So we have to be able to train our children up in the way that they should go. We got to point them in the direction. Remember it said the church is now. Look at the kids. They said the church and the kids won't even go to the churches no more. You know why? Because they're finding out the truth. 
the truth is coming in them like that. They are awakening. And well, I mean, how do you know that? Well, you, how do you know that? Because he said a mandate. Remember, he is the creator of all. He created everything. And so all he got to do is tell creation or tell whoever this is what is going on and this is the cutoff point. Now they're going to start awakening. We thought he was coming through a church. We thought he was coming back for the church. Oh, he's coming back for the church. No, he's coming back for the E1, B1, A, G. E1, B1, A, G. E1, B1, A, G. That we carry on inside of us is our signature gene that relates straight to him. And now that we our eyes awakening, he gave us instructions. Now, this is the reason why they took the book out, because it clearly says what we should do and how we should do it. And telling us what we won't do. Then she said it was still there. He said, but they are that, that people of thy inheritance, and thou hast delivered them with great power from the hands of the Egyptians, created them a clean heart and a holy ruach, and let them not be snared with the sin from his for, for until eternity. The most I say, and most I say to Moses, I know their contrariness and their thoughts and their stiff necks, and they will not be obedient until they confess their sins and the sins of their fathers. Now we understand, wait a minute. Now he, he's giving us a way to come back because right here in verse 14, he said, he said, after and after this, they were turned to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart. With all their heart and all their soul and with all their strength, and I will gather them from among all the Gentiles, and I will seek them so they so I will be found of them. Now he said, I'm not going to hide myself from you no more. After 400 years, I'm not hiding myself from you no more. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to come and speak to you. Hey, you're going to hear because he said, my sheep knows my voice. Okay, so when he said that, he said, and I was, and they, I was found of them, and when they seek me, they did it with all their heart and all their soul, and I will disclose unto them abounding peace with righteousness. So wait a minute. Sound like submission first. Submission when you seek it. Submit. And I will and I will and I will and I will disclose unto them abounding peace with righteousness. And I will remove the plant of uprightness with all my heart, with all my soul, and they shall be for a blessing and not for a curse, and they shall be the head and not the tail. So now we understand, now we're turning what? Right on the inside, we're making a conscious decision to move away from what our fathers that were doing and move that toward the way that the Most High calling us to do because that's what the scripture says. Then, and I'm just going to be jumping around, but y'all need to read the whole thing. If I keep going up again, he said, and I will build my sanctuary in their midst. So now he said, why are you doing that? In the land, and I hollered a place for myself inside of you. So now there's a place in the land, and there's a place on the inside of you. And so now when, when that inside of you needs something, then you have to come to a place where you can revamp or get stronger on the inside so you keep going. Okay. And then it goes down here and it says, and I'll read 22 again. And after this, they will turn to me in all the uprightness with, and with all their heart and with all their soul. And I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of the heart of their seed. And I will create in them a holy ruach. And I will cleanse them so that they shall not turn away from me from that time until eternity. So that is the promise that, listen, once you start on that pathway, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. Verse 23, 
and their souls shall cleave to me and to all my commandments, and, do, and, and they will fulfill my commandment, and, and, they, and I will be their father, and they shall be my children, and I will be, and I, <coughs> excuse me, and they shall be called the children of the living Elohim. And every angel and every spirit shall know. Yeah, they shall know that these are my sons and, and these are my children. And that I'm their father in, in, right, in uprightness and righteousness. And that I love them. I'm going to skip down here. Listen, one well, to go 25. And this is what he said to the angels. And do write down for thyself all these which I have declared unto thee on this mountain. The first and the last, meaning from the beginning to the end, which, which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days, in the law, and in the testimony, and in the weeks, and the jubilees, until, until eternity. Until eternity. Until I descend and dwell with them throughout eternity. So he said, he coming. He coming. This is the time that he is coming because they didn't give us a time stamp of what the 400 years was. Now we know what the 400 years is. Now we understand this is the time that he's coming back. And when he's coming back, it ain't going to be no, no easy stuff for people who said that they're going to do this, that, and the other. A lot of people wait till the end time when they see him crack the sky, they're going to hit their knees. I'm going to tell you, that's going to be the wrong time. Yeah. That's going to be the wrong time for you to seek him. Verse 27. And the most high will appear to, to, to the eyes of all. To some? No. He said, and the most high shall appear to the eyes of all. And all shall know that I am Elohim of Israel, the father of the children of Jacob, the king of Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion and Jerusalem shall be holy. He's telling us right now who we are. So, what we're, what we're, our job to do is to turn yes. obedience. Yes. Be obedient. Yes. Don't waver. Turn. Why? Because we've been in religion long. We have to get deprogrammed. We have to go into that place because, you know, it has afforded us. But what he said is now we're on track. We have to get back to that place of authority. Because they never taught us about the law. Yeah. They never showed us what the law is. They never showed us about the commandments. They said, oh, your sins are forgiven. Go ahead on now. You know, every, oh, no. Uh, your sins are forgiven. Keep on going. Yeah. Now you come find out, wait a minute. All of that's a lie. Oh, wait a minute. Now you have to come into a place. Now, because you know what? He do like justice. He knows who you are. You get visitations all the time. You see? And when he's visiting, you don't count it lightly. Count it serious because everybody don't get visitations in that now. And so now as we go on through these scriptures, when y'all get a chance, go ahead and read it. And you'll understand why he had chosen Jacob to be his firstborn son. Because he chose Jacob from when the very time that Adam came out of the garden and thrusted himself on the ground, when time started, that's when Jacob came into play. So now we are into a place where we have to be able to, to focus. And the power, they say we don't have no power. And they, they, they exercise John 3.16 all the time. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Well, we found something else that the, the inside the kingdom world of the Hebrew Israelites, that is for the Hebrews. That's for the people of the promise. He said, I didn't come back for the whole world, but I only came for the lost sheep yeah. of Israel. Y'all know something? And we, we really have to um, study. It's a lot of teaching. That right you got to know. Because right now, many people have a lot of questions. Yeah. Especially that. What I thought he loved everybody. And clearly, because we misread, we have to get an understanding who he loves and why judgment is here. Mm -hmm. So let us see. So when we talk about things, you know, yeah. Uh, forgive me if my question was out. No, 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 no. We have 
could be me. But um, I was, and if anybody else has any questions, questions, it's okay. I know you got a lot. I just want to know, of, of all the races that are in this melting pot, why is the African American race targeted? I, I need to know that. Because there's many races among us. But we're, we're the only one that's under siege. We're the only one that's under siege, as, as well as the, um, um, you know, the Native Americans, they were, and still are, as well as the Hispanics. And it's because, and the thing that is so something, and hopefully we get a chance, we might not answer and show you everything, it's because we're the chosen ones. We are the chosen. We are the kings and queens. We are his children. The yeah. scripture he just read. I mean, I'm talking about for real. You know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're always in be, the target. And it's always been the target since the beginning well, wait, of time. Well, wait a minute. So, it's, it's been said that we have power. Power that we don't even know nothing about. He talks about power. He, he talks about dunamis power that we have. That's what they're scared of. They're scared for us tapping off in the pot and into that fire and that power. But it has everything. Shadrach, right, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fiery furnace with Nebuchadnezzar. Isn't that right? Yes. Did they get burned? Yeah. Would that be enough to open your eyes? Well, let me say See? this. This is all, when I say this is all about us. All of us. No other person. So when you read it, you, you begin to read it from not a Greek standpoint, but a Hebraic standpoint. Because it's pointing to a, a people. So he loved us, Jacob, and he hated Esau. That was him. And so because we are the chosen ones, there is a hint from the evil one. So when we look at race, it's because of the bloodline from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. From the word go. Yeah. Same thing happened to Pharaoh. Remember? You know, they were killing the babies. We're talking about power. Even even the Messiah. We're talking about power. Just about all the twelve tribes had power. See, we didn't. We don't read that because, you know, it wasn't ever told us about reading, but now we know because in the 12 tribes, each and every one of them had power. I give you great success. If you're watching the track and field sports, the United States just wearing everybody out, everybody behind. That's the kind of power. We're, we're, great, we're great in everything. Everything we put our hands to. So when he said that he was going to remove this plant that we could, we wouldn't have no power as opposed to having power back, that would be enough to be fearful. Because whoever or whatever they did back then and we, they said we have gotten the power back, that's enough to do to shift us into to keep us going in another direction because they don't want us to know about who we are. That's why they took these books right here out. Because as soon as I read these books, something happened inside. Quicker it started happening. And I'm saying to myself, what is this? Then he started telling me about books and da 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 And I held it in me and then later on, now the people started to talk about it. I said, okay, now I understand. Ask the question. But when you ask it, there are angels waiting in your pathway to answer your question. It's because we're the chosen people. Yeah. That's it. And it's been a baby switch. They turn around, and it's a lot of history. It's a lot of history, and it, is, it goes very deep. So, yeah, it's so it's it's such a it, and, and it keeps us. We all have to study. You can't stop because what happens once you like like I I I got this book almost two years ago about Willie Lynch, and I knew about the Willie Lynch, and then I'm asking the father, what is our next piece? Because it's something where everybody's complaining about 
you know, our people kind of resistant into the truth. I'm, and I kept saying, well, what is what? And he kept the book, and I started reading, and I said, you know, psychologically, there's some stuff going on here. And that's what the undercurrent is now. And so we got to dispel all those lies. And I believe when we do that, we're going to see us open up even more. Any other questions? If you, follow, you, you have one? if you follow the Ruach, that's it. If you follow the Ruach and listen to what he tells you, you're going to be all right. Yeah. And yeah. please ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. Yeah, okay. I have nobody to ask. I, 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 I feel, I, you okay. got some questions. Why, why in the world is it that one people, you know, hate another people so bad? That was my question to him. And his, his answer to me was one group knows who another group is, and the other group don't know who they are. Right. And with that, I'm like, well, what you mean by that? And then it went to, you know, name change, African, colored, black, Afro-American. I said, all these name changes? So I said, Father, what is that about? He said, because it's something in a name. And so that's why you hear hearing so many people saying enough is enough around the world because they know. Everybody knows except us. Everybody knows. And they're talking about the different, you know, athletes and entertainers all coming into the truth now. You know, they say, you know, they didn't know the truth. But I'm like, regardless if they didn't know it or not, at least they're making their voice known. So many know who we are. Everybody knows. It's not hidden anymore. Well, you know, let me just add a little bit. You know, nothing is always waiting for something to come and wake it up. And so when he said, I put my words in your mouth, you have a way of saying it, and so you have to get this confidence or get into that place to, for him to validate himself in your faith. You know what I mean, what I'm saying? So when you get this knowledge of knowing, once you understand that you're in the right place, then you're going to be powerful because you won't have no doubt. Because doubt is really a, a killer. It, it kind of holds you back. And so at your own time, at your own request, whatever you're doing, seek him out ten times more about what we're saying so you can grab his faith that he will keep asking questions. And keep on asking. Please do. And I'm Especially. Too. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to say you have a lot of questions. For real. Just write it down. And yeah. Write it down. Yeah. And so I just want to say um, I'm grateful for Juneteenth. And I, I, you know, it's going to eventually be a, a national holiday. A lot of places were closed. That's a shift. Things are changing. We're making the turn. And that's a good thing. Um, it, it deals with, it really was in Galveston where it took place. But now they've made it a national holiday, you know, because um, it was January 1 of 1863, it's June 19 of 1865 uh, that it, you know that they are referencing to. But as you do your study, um, it was Galveston two years later in the southern part of this country that was actually free. But guess what? It's, we we are there. And we got to keep on moving. And the 400 year curse is up. Therefore, we have something to look for and, um, and understand that we are not there yet. And Galveston, <laughs> Galveston not there yet. is doing Juneteenth the whole week. They've been doing it forever. The whole week. Why? Because they feel like they're behind. You know, they do concerts, all that kind of stuff. On you know, we went to a, we went to one. They, they they doing, they're doing a whole lot. Why? Because now they, they know that they were free. You know what I mean? And so it had to reach out further out, 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 out. In most places, you know, like uh, uh, Arkansas and all of that, they kind of got it really later. You know, Tennessee and all of that. You know, that's where the hard hit areas. But guys have might been a port. You know, they came in and they began to start telling them, well, that time, Galveston was the capital of I was Texas. I was like, uh-uh, how y'all gonna let somebody, you know, you gonna stay in slavery forever? So, 
We do not celebrate 4th of July. Hallelujah. That is not our independence. Well, it's just not, you know, I, I did I, I did the, the, the fireworks, but and so, you know, do not we are boycotting the fourth of July. And please do and just enjoy Juneteenth for the rest of this month. Let everybody know I'm celebrating June and the change that is happening. So you you know that there's a change that's happening, but you are part of that change. You gotta do something, you gotta speak. You got to be proactive now. All this passiveness is over. Everybody has a voice, and everybody's voice needs to be heard. And so make sure you are part of the movement. Yes. And there is a movement going on. Make sure you're part. You see what you need to do, what you need to say. And so we, we are blessed people. So um, the Emancipation Proclamation, we say yay to it. You need to take it and read it and see what it says. And you will see why, you know, we don't celebrate certain things anymore because of the oppressor. We were still oppressed even up to George Floyd. Then something happened where now we're seeing a turn that's in our society and even over the world where we've been scattered. We are seeing people protesting. Well, why are people protesting over there? Because it's everywhere. And most people know who we are in other countries. It's just that we did not know who we were. And the people in Brazil and those other places, and Haitian, they were able to, once they were brought there during slavery, they were able to take over their ma the masters and kill them. And um, they received their freedom. And so it was just in other places, especially the United States, where it was just a horrible situation. Any other questions? Anything y'all want to add? You want to add something? Do you have a question? Second is, is that Ms. Apostle um, Carlos always talks about, he, he has dialogue when he talks to the angel, and the an angel talks back to him and explains why, God explains why he did, he's doing what he's doing and why we're the people and how he chose it. He, he breaks it down in there really good. Second Ezra is the book. Really, there were three books I said should have never been taken out. Um, first and second answer. It should have not ever been taken out at all. Um, the book of Enoch should not have been taken out. And the book of Jasher. Yeah, Jasher, which is mentioned, and Jubilees. Because if we, I mean, we would have been a better off people. We probably would have returned a little bit sooner. <laughs> you know, anything else? So, it's in there. Anybody else? Lord told me uh, a few days ago he was going to give me a new eye. Okay, what is this? See. You don't see. Another way of seeing. You're going to see. You're going to see. You know, you know you have to, yeah, that's that gift that he's talking about for you. You're going to see. And you're going to see me. You're going to see me. And you're going to know. And especially here, he has to give you a new eye to see what he has done, where this word is going to open up to you. It's going to open up differently. You're like, oh my goodness, we are all over the world. Oh, because we are. So that's a good thing. Yeah, just this, this uh, second answer is a, oh, you, you might read it all because it's, it's so drawn. So much drawing in this. And the question answers the questions that you have. Like, it talks about the times and the seasons and all of that. And you know, it just takes you through it, you know. That's it. You know, it, it, it's a lot of questions, you know. We're gonna be we're gonna be starting the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath back again, and that would be good because you know, on the Sabbath we wind up opening books and reading so we can have so we can cooperate with and I think we, we try to do it on uh, on, uh, on Tuesdays too, right? Yeah, we're going to come back to our Tuesdays and we're going to let everybody know. Mm -hmm. Well, we pull up the table. After we get through with the lives, we pull up the table because we got to know. Yeah, you have to know. Because it's the knowledge that you know that creates the problem. Right. Because if you don't have the knowledge, you can just still going to be in trouble with my people Paris, and you'll discount something that he's trying to do. Doesn't it feel good though when he says something way that back then and then everybody's still going on with the same system and then all of this pandemic stuff started happening 
and then all these churches are not coming back. You hear what I'm saying? So if we would have listened back then, we would be far ahead. Why? Because we listened to what the Most High is saying. This is what he's saying now unto us, that we must be able to hear what he's saying. You know, because this time he's leading us through this thing so we can be as he is leading this brigade. He said he would be the one to lead this. And so this is what we, this is the pathway that we should go. So you would be comfortable. I, I would say, ask him to give you uh, uh, the heart so you can so you can put your faith in it, meaning that 100 percent believe in what you're having in it so you can move on. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, there's some things that you kind of judge. You see? But I'm telling you this, pray about it and see what the next time you got say. So, Okay, so I thank everybody. If anybody else has any questions, this is all a good thing and it's a blessed thing. And, and, and the Most High did not leave us. Don't you know most, and I don't believe it, I'm going to stop. But don't you know most of our black men, they want to know why our black men. I've had so many brothers and young men say, I don't understand that they have seen so much, they've been talked to so bad, because the thing that I saw, they're, they're, no, they're not superior, never was. But they were made to, the plan was to make um, really Lynch, to make them feel like they are nothing. And after you move forward, um, after a year with the agenda, you don't have to worry about it. So it's passed on. And so it's going to help us break some stuff and create the middle. All right? Okay. I, I just want to say, I would tell people all the time, you can teach a person how to do any, or train a person to do anything that you need them to do. And with that being said, that we've had a lot of learned behavior. So what we have to do is go in reverse to break the behavior, which create generational curses. So Father, we just thank you for the word that has come forth tonight. We thank you for the message and the messenger. And Father, we thank you that the word is falling on good ground. And we ask that you help us to water that word so that the enemy does not pluck it up. We thank you, Father, and we give you praise for this house. We thank you for the sanctuary that you have created within us and the dwelling place that you have created with us. And we thank you for coming to dwell with us on this night. And we give you praise for your protection in Yeshua's name. And we say it is so. It is so. It is so. It is so.